Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. So there's a new update to the Digital Geochron. I have the Digital Geochron Atlas 4K device hooked up here to a 4K monitor. And uh, maybe let me zoom in here so you can see that they've added a moon phase feature. So here you can see they have the moon phase. It's just up there in the upper left part of the map. And it's just kind of an on-off thing. You go into the weather configuration and just select whether or not you want that on or off. Right now we have just a very small piece of a moon, a crescent moon. And so uh, it's, it's not much to look at at the moment. I suppose if I wait a week, uh, you'd see a, a nice half moon on there. Or if I wait a couple of weeks, it'd be a full moon icon. But anyway, that's where it appears. Now I know with some other apps you might have seen, They've got a, a moon tracking feature sometimes. I, I mean, obviously there are some apps and, and some uh, websites that will give you something similar to what the Geochron will show you as far as a world map and the Terminator line and, and where it's nighttime and where it's daytime and what would be the relative position of the Earth uh, and the Sun with the Sun most directly above one part of the Earth. Yeah, you can see that in other places. And some of them also have kind of a moon tracking feature as well. And so that is not yet available on the Geochron. I think they may be working on it, but you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to complain if it doesn't come up. I kind of like that the Geochron has a certain distinct look about it. I like the way it so closely matches the look of the mechanical Geochron that's been around for decade after decade already. So with the digital device, it still feels like a Geochron. You can save some money by getting the digital device and hooking it up to whatever HD or, or 4K monitor that you want to, but you never feel like you're using a poor man's Geochron. It always just has that class and elegance of a real Geochron device. So that's what I love about the, uh, the the digital Geochron. And so as far as that goes, I'm not the person asking for lots of drastic changes to how this Geochron looks and how it works. I also am no expert <laughs> when it comes to how difficult is it to uh, come up with the, the programming for this, how, to, you know, to write the code and to implement this in the device uh, the way the guys there uh, do at, at, at Geochron. I, so I, if I were to ask for, you know, they ought to add this feature or that feature, I have no idea how difficult it is to add that. And I know that the folks at Geochron, especially Patrick Bolin, the, the owner of Geochron, is trying to be very conscientious about offering features that will not significantly raise the price of the Geochron device. And also, when you, when you add layers and when you add other uh, items to the Geochron, he doesn't want that to become uh, something that's, that's, that's going to be a, a financial burden to the user. You know, uh, he's, he's so far avoided adding premium subscription content. And I, I suppose that is still uh, a possibility. But uh, so, so when it comes to adding the moon, I think some of the people who are uh, making suggestions perhaps are asking for the moon as far as how difficult it is it is it to to implement some of these new features. So for now, the moon uh, icon in the corner of the map uh, just it stays in that one spot as the map moves below it. That to me, that's just great. That's kind of a kind of like having a, a moon dial on a grandfather clock. You know, you don't expect uh, much more than just to see the phase of the moon when you see it on a grandfather clock. And at this point, I'm going to be very happy just to see that moon icon here on the Geochron. That, that's fine with me. I have to say, as a preface to any other comments, that when it comes to the Geochron, the company, what they're doing with their products, I really have no thoughts as far as criticism or uh, saying, well, I, I really, really hope they uh, they add this feature or that feature. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're doing just great and everything they do, I'm just, I'm just happy with it. I'm delighted that I have what I have. They add a, a little thing here or there, and that's just delightful as well. So I can show you, for example, there's a website here, and I'll have a link below where, where you can look at it and it'll show you something like the Geochron map. And also there's a layer in this that it will show you kind of like the moon version of the Geochron map at the same time. So I don't know if people really want that on the uh, official Geochron device. You know, where is the moon uh, most directly overhead as far as your perspective on Earth? 
versus where is the sun most directly overhead and where are the places where you can see the moon or, or I should say where the moon can see the surface of the earth. You know, I, I guess that could happen. But again, I don't know how difficult it is that uh, to put that into the Geochron software. And it's not something I'm clamoring for. Um, so anyway, for, for now, I'm just going to say there's a moon icon there. They may decide to change the way that appears in the future. But for now, there it is. Now, one other, um, you know, significant change here with this latest software update for the Geochron is they've changed how the how the precipitation layer shows up here in the weather. So let me activate this real quick, the weather layer. And in this case, I'm going to go into the settings for uh, how, how the weather configuration looks here. Right now I have it set so uh, temperature opacity is zero and wind speed is zero. Precipitation opacity, I've turned that up all the way. And cloud cover, I've turned that to 50%. So when we see what that looks like, on the map here, for example, in the Pacific Ocean, you can see the cloud cover and then you see that precipitation layer. They've changed the colors on this because previously I, I can't even remember what the colors were, but I guess they were a little bit difficult to see against, uh, you know, the ocean and some of the other features on the map. So now they're more in line with what you would see on most weather radar systems like, the, you know, NOAA and some of those. So uh, the lighter precipitation is green, then it gets to a darker green as the pre precipitation is uh, more intense it'll turn orange, you know, yellow, orange, and, and, and red if it's super intense. So those colors are now incorporated into the way the Geochron renders those layers when you've activated the precipitation layer. And perhaps I could just change this really quickly to uh, grayscale. And I'll also change the map to the topographical map there. And then you see maybe it shows up even, even better there. How is that weather layer showing up with the, you know, with the clouds and precipitation. So as soon as we got that feature or realized that that was uh, one of the new updates that had been sent to my Geochron device, I turned it on and the kids loved it. In fact, we don't even, you have to use the, the grayscale feature to make that show up. Let me just change that back to a uh, full color map there topographical map. And you can see just how pretty that is. The kids love it. Uh, the neat thing about this Geochron is that uh, it, it's, it's made in such a way that if I let the kids play around with the remote and start changing any of the settings they want to, it's not going to permanently mess anything up. It just means, well, maybe they prefer uh, the look to be a certain way and I'll pick up the remote later on and change it back to the way I want it. But there's nothing they can do with the remote that's going to drastically, uh, you know, like damage the Geochron or anything like that. And that's what I love about it. I show the kids the correct way to use this and to configure things the way they want to. And then I don't worry about it. So that's, that's one of the great things about having a, a dedicated little box that is the Geochron hardware. And it's beautiful. And uh, I just leave it on all the time. When we're not using the TV in the family room, I, I leave this on and the kids love it. So here we are in a new year and at the end of 2020, which was a difficult year for most of us, uh, Patrick from Geochron just kind of gave a little update on how the company is doing. And uh, I'm encouraged that they're, they're carrying on despite all the challenges of the previous year. One thing he did mention in passing, they are going to, uh, they're going to add some some layers, some features on the Geochron digital device uh, in, in this year now um, that, that will appeal to ham radio folks. So that's one thing that the ham radio uh, community, uh, you know, they like the Geochron, so they offer suggestions and Geochron uh, as a company is, is ready to respond to those. And so uh, you can look for some of those features coming up. But one thing that he just mentioned in passing this year, they are looking to, uh, well, introduce new hardware for the Geochron Atlas 4K. So you say, wow, new hardware, what does that mean? Well, of course, it's a little computer, the, the device itself. And uh, as you would expect, uh, it's a new year and the people that make those little devices, the, the hardware, are probably introducing something new. So it's kind of like when they put out a new iPhone every year. Uh, <laughs> it may not necessarily change the user experience drastically, but uh, of course, since it's a new year, the hardware that's inside that device is going to be a little bit better than it was last year. So something to look forward to uh, later this year. And I'm thinking, you know, I have the Geochron downstairs where uh, the kids like to look at it all the time. And I miss having one in my office. And so maybe I'll just hold out 
until I start hearing more about when the new hardware is coming out. And I'll still be able to use the current hardware that I have. They're going to support that for as long as they possibly can, which could be years and years and years. And then when the new hardware comes out, um, you know, it's probably I'm going to expect it to basically uh, operate the same way, just maybe a little bit more responsive when, uh, you know, when you're changing settings or uh, the, the layers are rendering out and stuff like that. So anyway, that's the latest I know about the Geochron Atlas 4K and the digital Geochron devices in general. So I thought I'd just pass that along. Um, if, if you have one of these Geochron devices, probably that update has already been sent to you, whether you knew it or not. So what you do is you go into the, the settings here for uh, the live layers, and you can configure the weather stuff as you will, or just down here at the bottom of the list, there's that moon phase that you can have uh, showing or not showing and just uh, select what you want there. And just something a little something nice to add to the screen. All right, that's all for now. And I hope you'll join me soon because I think I've got some more ideas coming soon for more episodes of the Good Timekeeping Show.